Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the SkyZone 030 goggles. Yes, these are some new goggles from SkyZone and they've been out for a little while so you've probably seen more than one review and yeah, they're really good. And I have a problem with that. We'll get to that in just a minute. The first thing I should talk about is if you have the opportunity to go try on goggles, you should definitely take that, whether it's at a local flying club or there's a race somewhere in your area. Even if you're not really a race pilot or something like that, if you can go and find somebody else in the FPV community with these goggles or some other goggles that you're looking at, you should definitely take the opportunity because these are very, very personal and they're a very expensive purchase in the case of goggles like this or the Fat Sharks. And before we get into kind of my opinions about these, and, and yes, I have a strong opinion about these, uh, I need to back up for those that aren't familiar. I have been flying for the last year or so or something like that, the Fat Shark HDOs with the rapid fire module. And before that, I had the HD or the HD3 Fat Shark goggles. And then before that, I had box goggles. I got started in box goggles, the Hobby King Quantum Pros or Quantum 2s or something like that. They were functional and they were inexpensive and I enjoyed them while I used them, but we definitely have a much better experience when you can afford these sort of goggles. So of all the goggles I've tried, I think these surpass them in fitment and comfort um, by a fairly large margin, to my surprise. I thought the Fat Shark goggles had it down. That it was this it was this form factor, this shape, these curves, these lines, and this is how it had to be for them to fit a very wide audience. But I think Skyzone has done something different, and it doesn't look all that different, but it fits really well. And there's absolute absolutely no light leak. No light leak around the goggles, no light leak through the plastics. It is dark inside. So when you turn on the screens, you see the screens, and the screens are great. Luxurious screens. Everything is crisp. I have a first impression that I recorded in a flight in the house. Unfortunately, I didn't have my Fat Shark goggles on the right channel. It was a near channel, so I'm not going to include that DVR. Uh, but to the fitment, there's two different faceplates. So even if it, this one, as I have it assembled, doesn't necessarily fit your face great, there's another opportunity. They do include a second set of foam, which is a bonus in case one gets stinky or grubby or broken or torn or what have you. You got a second set by default. It does include modules. That may be a downside for some people because as receiver modules change or evolve or improve, you're kind of stuck with these unless you're willing to do some DIY. And that's kind of where I'm stuck. These goggles work well. I love the OSD inside. It's full color. It's crisp. I have really come accustomed to it in a very short amount of time. You may know I reviewed the last pair of Skyzone goggles. They were more budget oriented, but I've gotten used to the button layout that I thought was a little bit quirky. Um, and I've really found myself drawn to that OSD where you stay in the goggles and you have that visual appearance. This does have a camera in front. I don't find that useful, but it it could be for someone and maybe it just doesn't work for me. So for me, that's not a selling point for you that could or it might not be as well. Uh, the fan we'll listen to a little bit later. It is a little bit louder, but I don't want to call it loud than the Fat Shark goggles. Fat Shark goggle fan, typically I have to put my ear to it when I'm outside to hear it. This one, I can actually hear it if things are nice and still and quiet and I'm outside. But when I fly, it doesn't bother me at all. But the one thing I need your help with is, should I switch? And that was one of my primary questions as I was using these and thinking about the review video is, am I going to be switching? Because I really want to switch. I want these screens. I want to look at them. I want this fitment. I really want to switch. But what we're going to take a look at is the DVR side of things. And this is only because I make micro videos. So the DVR is really important and therefore the reception is very important. And, and let's take a look at that. And this is where, please wait until we get through this little section where I need your help. As viewers of this channel, what do you think? Is the DVR possibly better than my HDOs with the rapid fire module? The reception doesn't seem to be quite as good all the time, but in specific cases, the reception might be better. So let's get to that DVR footage where I need your help deciding whether or not these are going to become my daily drivers or not. As we start this flight, I'm going to talk about the quad a little bit. You see up there in the OSD, it says Little Deuce. Some of you are going to be familiar with that. That is a uh, creation that I had planned to review. I don't know if I'm going to review it, but I will tell you one thing. If you're a builder and you are looking at a, a really light micro, kind of a new age micro that we've been doing recently, the little floaters, as you're going to see here, 
They are a really nice performing motor, and you can get those from TeamBlackSheep.com. Just search for Lil, L-I-L, floaters. Uh, they're an 1103, 8,000 kV, and they perform very well. I was really impressed. I'm swinging a 3-inch prop here, the HQ, or 3x2 prop, and uh, I was quite happy. But we're going to jump into the reception test portion of this video. And this is where you might want to slow the video down, or you might want to hit pause every once in a while. And now I don't normally fly over here, so this isn't part of the decision-making process or whether whether or not I switch. But it is something that you need to know when you're looking at purchasing a set of goggles like this. I am running 200 milliwatt, not 400 milliwatt. And I kind of forgot that because, as you can see, I'm going to head around the house, which I've only done on 400 milliwatt. And we're going to have a problem because DVR is going to drop out. So you can see the Fat Shark, it actually stopped recording and it created a new file. So I went ahead and I synced that up. It dropped, I can't say how many frames specifically it dropped, but it was enough to where there was a couple of seconds in there. So I have to presume it was at least 100 or 200 frames that it dropped. And now we're going to fly around the front of the house. And, and I left the Fat Shark side when it did drop out blank just to make that point. I've never had that happen before. It could have been an anomaly, but I didn't want to rerun this and then not have that issue because that is part of the comparison. Now, I should probably rerun it here later on to find out if that's something that's going to happen regularly because if I do any other VTX testing, that's something I need to know. Uh, but normally, I, I disarm right away, so maybe that's what it was that I stayed in that area where there was no reception rather than hitting the disarm, and that caused the Fat Shark DVR to freak out. Now, there is a, an updated firmware you get from Immersion RC. They kind of did some of their own... Uh, black magic for programming the firmware on the Fetrek DVR that is supposed to remedy things like that. I have not flashed it myself, but it is there, and it's something that if you have Fetrek HDOs, you're probably aware. And I think it works on most Fetrek goggles as well. Uh, it was something I was always cautious about doing because what if something goes wrong? Then I'm out of my primary goggles, and uh, that affects everything I do with the channel and my enjoyment for flight. Uh, we do some general flying around here, and this is where you're kind of grading, so to speak, the DVR. And you see that the DVR gets out of sync. That's also something that I've struggled with. Now, that consistently happens. That's why I put up there that the Sky Zone goggles are consistently 30 frames per second, where the Fat Shark goggles are not. Uh, I have seen everything down to 28 point something frames per second, and every once in a while you'll get 30 frames per second. So the Fat Shark DVR, again, which has an updated firmware where I, I could get and, and flash. It, it's part of my struggle because I do use audio, and the camera that's recording audio, obviously, it doesn't suffer from this. So it's something that I have to kind of work harder on, which makes uh, the editing process of creating the videos for this channel a little bit more time-consuming. Of course, I do several punch-outs because I'm having such a good time with those little floaters, or lil floaters. Sorry, I said that wrong. Uh, but that that is the part where I'm kind of... Wanting you to help me grade whether I should use the Sky Zone goggles all the time uh, is the DVR. That's really my only hang up. And that's, as you probably heard a time or two and you're going to hear again, that is where I'm looking at. As far as the review video goes, I'm not going into every feature that you've probably already seen. This is more about the experience of the goggles, not necessarily all the different features, because it has all the features we need for flying FPV. Okay, so hopefully you've made it through that and you've left your comment down below about my conundrum or my question about should I start to use these goggles all the time for making videos on this channel. It's very important for me. I think I need to make sure I get not just your approval, but I get more people looking at things and making decisions about this channel than just myself. Yeah, I'm one guy. I'm isolated. But I, I want you to enjoy the viewing experience. And if you think it's better staying where I'm at, than going to the new one than I will. I'll still use these every time I'm flying casually. And also something else, if I were to have a guest over or have somebody that was taking on a ride along, I want them to have this experience. This is a better experience. And speaking of better experience, Banggood has their anniversary sale coming up. These are currently on sale for $427.89. So you probably have to get new antennas. The antennas that they send it with, their typical linear antennas, they'll work 
but they won't give you the same sort of reception that you're seeing in my video. This next section is my first impressions, and unfortunately I do a terrible job with the camera. I really wasn't looking at the camera or focusing on the camera. I was actually looking in the goggles, and I'm going to switch back and forth. And unfortunately, I didn't get the camera on myself, so during that section where the camera is kind of pointed in an odd, you kind of see me from about here over. It's it's I messed up. That's the short order is I messed up, but I can't get that first impression back and I thought I should share that with you as well. So I'll put some flight video up and then I'll switch it over to the actual DVR footage of the SkyZone goggles in the flight when I do take off. So it gives you something to watch while you listen to me talk about my comparison between the Fetcher goggles and the SkyZone 030 goggles. Okay, so the SkyZone DVR should be running now. And you could probably see those pictures in the dining room or that formal dining room up front out over here those edges of those pictures is pretty clear hopefully that comes out in dvr and the lamps in the hallway are pretty clear let me look at the fat sharks yeah the edges of those pictures in the front dining room aren't nearly as clear i mean you still st tell that they're squares and the lamp is you know i can still tell it's a lamp and everything it's in hanging in the hallway and the one on the wall but the clarity, something else I'm noticing is that shimmer from the downstairs light off the table. Boy, the, the table, it just looks more crisp and clear. It looks like more vibrant colors. Even the OSD, the white looks more white. It looks like it has a black outline to the letters, which I believe it does. It's something I've never noticed before using my Fat Shark goggles. Yeah, it's much more muted on the Fat Sharks. And the fitment. You know, I've been flying these Fat Sharks for a while. I don't even have the strap on. I'm just pressing it to my face as you can probably see. Excuse me. Yeah, the fitment, it just feels like, hopefully you can see me here, I feel like this angle is too low. Maybe that's better. It feels like the, the, the SkyZone goggles just go, for me, right in the place where it feels like they should, right underneath my eyes and kind of around my eyebrows and just seals up tightly. Of course, they've got two face plates. I've got a pretty big head. You know, I think the last time I got a fitted cap, it was eight and five eighths. I know it's giant, but... These just feel right on my face. I do wish there was some sort of visual display. Oh, hush. I do wish there was some sort of visual display that I was recording. I know I could press the button and the OSD comes down. I think. Let me try that again. Refresh myself. Yeah, the OSD comes down on a quick press. Gives us a runtime and goes away. Hopefully that was recorded on DVR, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's not. Everything just looks more crisp and bright and clear. As far as the field of view goes... Boy, this here, let me see if I can get them both kind of ready to quick switch. In the moment, I can't remember what the field of view is on the HDOs. It feels like it's the same, but I could be wrong there. That's just... Maybe, maybe the Fat Shark screen feels larger, by chance. Okay, I'm going to record with both, and I'm going to start flying with the uh, Sky Zones, which I have. Okay, I need to sit back and relax so I can fly. I do find that this cable I've got coming out from my battery is a little bit distracting, so... I'm going to tuck that into my pocket. The goggles feel real nice. Watch is in the wrong spot. Okay. We're armed. I've got quite a bit of camera angle on this particular one, so... Well, right there, even going into that sun, with the light that's coming through this window, 
That feels much less blown out than I'm used to. Let's go downstairs and see what our reception's like. Okay, so I've got a fair bit more break up here than I'm used to. Let's go back here. Pretty reasonable. You know, it's not terrible break up. It's worse right back there by the uh, table down there. Whoa, don't crash! Don't crash! Oh, All right, let's see if turtle mode works. Yay! Looking at that light, like normally when you're looking at a light, it gets really blown out, and I can actually see some of the edges of that light, and then that shadow off the tin of the HVA system isn't nearly as... It's just not as dramatic as I would expect, as I'm used to. All right, getting out of hand. Got to slow myself down. Especially can't talk and fly like that either. This little brush or brushless quad is not tuned either, but it feels all right. All right, so our, our breakup is worse right around this treadmill, if you compare it to other flight footage I have, but it's still very passable. Even in this room where it's traditionally more dark. Let me go back over there. I can hear this little lamp. This light doesn't emit a lot. And it is very cloudy outside. I'm getting low battery already. We're going to run it down a little bit. It just feels brighter. It looks brighter. I shouldn't say feels. I feel like it is brighter. I guess we can compare DVR. But I don't know if that's going to come through. Because it's really a screen difference. Yeah, this feels like a different experience, almost. I don't want to be too dramatic, but... You know, it's the same tech, it's just... You know, Fat Shark Goggles, the HDOs came out a year ago. And this is brand new. And they're both using the same OLED tech. So I'm a little bit surprised, maybe it's a different quality of OLED panels. I don't know a lot about OLED, but I can tell you this, that... This visually is quite a bit better than I've experienced on my HDOs. I like this. This feels like I've got an updated camera and VT, well, camera, especially on here, that I can just see better and more. I don't know if I mentioned it, but it's cloudy outside, so we don't have a lot of uh, sunlight coming in through the windows. This is pretty much all house lights. Yeah, well, that's pretty low. We better bring it in. Yeah, that was, I like these. The reception wasn't as good. But I'm not certain I would, at least in this flight, I'm not certain I would be too worried about that if I didn't make videos and fly in the house and make videos. But reception is important. We'll need to fly it more outside uh, to get a better idea of reception in a different environment. But for inside... Yet at the very least, it rivals my, probably my LaForge. I can't remember the last version. LaForge recently went out of business. Uh, LaForge, it's either the V3 or V4 LaForge module with diversity. It, it reminds me a lot of that as far as the reception in the house. Okay, well that's enough for this uh, indoor first impression flight. I, hopefully I was somewhat verbal when I was trying to fly. I don't fly and talk. Very well. See, our voltage can clear back up to 3.66. That's good. All right, I'm going to stop the recording now. Now that we've seen those sections about the goggles, I think the last thing that comes to my mind is, would I switch if I didn't make 
YouTube videos, if I, I didn't post this stuff and, you know, post regularly flight videos, specifically micros, I think if I were a 5-inch pilot or if I had a GoPro or any sort of HD camera, this is what I'm going to use. When I'm flying a machine that has an HD camera and I'm going to post that HD footage, whether it's a Catech Turtle or a Run Cam or what have you, I'm going to fly using these because I like these more than I like these. It's just the side of things where I have, I'm have i posting it to YouTube and I need to make sure I'm making the right decision and I, I want you to be a part of it, please. But the last part is, if I didn't do that, would I switch? Well, yeah, I would switch, but there's another piece to that. If I already had these goggles and I'd paid good hard money for them, which my wife did buy these, would I pay $427.89 for these? That's a tougher sell. That depends on your budget, depends upon your wallet and your bank account. I can't make that decision for you. But these are better. Now, if I had HD 3s, would I switch? Try to find a way. Because, you know, that was a purchase two years ago. I've spent, you probably spent a lot of money, well over $400 on this hobby since a two-year-ago purchase. But I would switch. And, and that's kind of where the evaluation might come for anybody who's already got this form factor of goggles. When did you get them? How much did you spend for it? And what's your budget's like? These, in my opinion, they're the best goggles on the market right now. I, I, it, I don't typically say these sort of things. I'm not very effusive about products. Longtime subscribers can chime in down below. One of the faults I have is I'm oftentimes too muted about my opinion when I, pro when I have a product review is that I just kind of show you the product and I don't necessarily give a strong opinion uh, about a, po a product. I'm going to fly with these one way or another. So I'll dig into the comments, see how you guys feel about the DVR and whether or not I should switch. Um, hopefully I've helped you kind of make a decision about whether these goggles are a good fit for you. I think if you're looking at goggles and you don't have any goggles like this at all, definitely go for these goggles. If you're purchasing right now and you're doing your homework on these, get these goggles. Don't get the other goggles. Of course, Fat Shark could release something in two months or six months. They had a, a receiver or module scheduled to be released and they pulled that back from the market. I don't know how, I don't know about their product plans, but right now, as far as I'm concerned, these are the best goggles on the market. I should qualify that for analog FPV, which is what we're commonly doing. And for those that are still here, the diehards that have been watching this entire big long video, I do have a question about the, the shirts things. When I review video footage, I've always kind of felt like my background was very distracting, but I'm it, the space is really tight here. And I did buy a green screen. I thought I could just put something up. But the green screen is such a pain to put up that I find I don't have the energy or desire to get it out to block this off because then I can't get to anything like my chargers and other quads. And, you know, I have stuff around me for building and review purposes. It's littered with stuff. What do you think? I just hung up some shirts. I've got my X Racer shirt over here, and I've got my Tiny Whoop shirt right there. And then we've got the uh, Nick Burns shirt over here. That's the logo for the channel. I just kind of hung up some shirts, and I thought, will this mute my distraction? And is it a positive or is it a negative for you and your experience? So again, please let me know what you think. I mean, it's just a couple of shirts. I really like the X Racer shirt. We'll be seeing that here coming up probably next week. Um, and, of course, I like the blue shirt as well. And then we've got our Tiny Whoop back over here. I, just three random shirts that were kind of first off the pile. Put them on hangers, kind of randomly hung them up. I could probably do a better job. Maybe run a post or a string. Something that was be quick that I could bring up and bring down um, when it comes to making these videos. So I would appreciate your input. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions about the SkyZone 030 goggles, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.